Hello and welcome to Glanfest. My name is Bernie Doherty and I'm the Community Archaeologist. Galway Community Archaeology Project is funded by Galway County Council and the Heritage Council. The parish of Glenamaddy is located in the northeast of County Galway in the civil parish of Buivna. Its name is thought to derive from the Gaelic Glan na Maya Du, meaning Glen of the Black Plain. This refers to the black bottom of the town lake, which is exposed during the summer months. Glenamaddy is an attractive, well laid out town. The development of the village dates back to the 1820s, when a church was erected and a market established. The first edition ordnance survey map shows the church with dispersed housing lining the approach roads. A police barracks is located on the Craigs Road. Glenamaddy Workhouse, located on the eastern outskirts of the town, was opened in 1853. The village prospered and grew with the advent of markets and fairs. This increased trade saw the addition of further buildings. The market weight store was built around 1900 to hold the weights used with the tripod scales on market days in Glenamaddy. St. Patrick's Catholic Church was established in 1904. This replaced the earlier church that stood in the grounds of the local graveyard. In 1909, St. Bridget's Town Hall was built and has played an important role in the cultural and social life of the community ever since. Jeremiah Mee from Glenamaddy, County Galway, was a constable in the Royal Irish Constabulary stationed in Listowel, County Kerry. In June 1919, he and 13 colleagues resigned from the force rather than hand their barracks over to the Black and Tans. The Listowel RIC mutiny was an important event in the history of Irish independence struggle because it exposed the brutal nature of the British campaign in Ireland. The Mee family came from Knock-On's East, Glenamaddy. A reminder of early ecclesiastical activity is evident with an architectural fragment on the grounds of the church. This was salvaged from nearby Buivna Cemetery. A 19th century stone cross and a baptismal font from the existing church make up this memorial park on the church grounds. Inside the church, stained glass windows from Harry Clark's studio can be admired. The tripartite window above the altar depicts the ascension. The Virgin Mary and St. Joseph windows are also fine examples of this art. The rose window, which is located above the gallery on the north gable, depicts the Lamb of God. This was fitted by Lyons Studio in 1940. Another fragment depicting the faint remains of a medieval creature is located on the site of Buivna Cemetery. Like many cemeteries, it's located within the grounds of an earlier church. The remains of this church is evident on the top of the hill within the graveyard. There's a few metres of this one metre wide wall with traces of the outline of the church extending southwestwards on the summit of the hill. Many of these stones would have been reused as burial markers throughout the years. In the adjoining field, a bull on stone has been worked into a triangular shaped piece of bedrock. Originally, it may have been used with another rounded stone for grinding corn or other foodstuffs. Bullion stones are very often associated with early Christian sites. Many people believe there are curative powers within the water that lies within the bowl. They've also been known to be used as cursing stones or pressures. Moving to the townland of Kiltulla, there's another concentration of sites. St Bridget's Well is located close to the remains of a medieval church. The well has been restored and a statue within the enclosure depicts St Bridget. Holy wells can predate Christianity and often are associated with early Christian sites. From the holy well you can see an enclosed graveyard which on closer inspection incorporates the ruins of a medieval church. The stone wall enclosure is much later in date. It's known as Champel Muil, meaning derelict or bare church. Traces of a possible circular enclosure within the field are evident. This overlooks Kiltulla Lake. 
There is a Cranog in this lake, and these are typically early medieval in date, but some have been known to be inhabited over long periods of time. Cranogs were constructed of brushwood, split timbers, stone and peat. This one is probably contemporary with the ecclesiastical site, being a refuge or even a place for quiet devotion. It could also have been used as a lookout or defence post for the castle located on the shore of the lake. What remains of this castle is the outline of a tower house and the faint remains of a bone wall. The castle was in existence in 1574 when it was in the possession of Hubert O'Honghannon. The earliest evidence of human activity in the area comprises the impressive remains of a megalithic tomb in the townland of Balnastak. This site has been reused in more recent times as a children's burial ground or a killeen. This is one of eight children's burial grounds in the parish. The low-lying and gently rolling landscape around Glenamaddy is mostly agricultural. The mosaic of green fields, wetlands, raised bog and pockets of coniferous forestry is underlain with limestone. The large turlock on the eastern edge of the town is part of a special area of conservation comprising a large turlock and bog complex. This is known as Loch Lurgeen Bog Glenamaddy Turlock Special Area of Conservation. A unique feature is a small lake on top of the bog. This is the source of a stream which flows from the lake through the bog and into the turlock. This was prepared for Glanfest, Glenamaddy Heritage Festival. Galway Community Archaeology Project is funded by Galway County Council and the Heritage Council.